welcome back to the latest edition of my vintage lingerie collection and this is part three so every video I'm kind of just doing things a little bit differently I normally do voiceovers and I might do a voiceover on this one if I need to but it's just easier to talk through it right now so I've picked out four pieces of vintage lingerie that I wanted to highlight and I thought it would be fun to somewhere in here add in some pictures of me wearing some of these pieces. I used to take a lot of pictures wearing and documenting them, but now that I have my vintage shop, I have no time. That outlet for creativity <laughs> has been very spent. So I'll try to post some photos and how you can use a lot of this vintage lingerie in your everyday wardrobe. So let's get started. This stunning 1960s beauty is by the brand Hollywood Vasseret. Now Hollywood Vasseret started as a gentleman's line and eventually developed into women's lingerie. They started in 1900 doing ribbed men's union suits. By 1951, the parent company Musingwear created the Vasseret label. And by 1958, it combined with another Musingwear holding company to create Hollywood Vasseret. Now, I have pieces, many pieces of vintage lingerie from this brand, as well as gorgeous, gorgeous nightgowns, which maybe I'll do another video on that. But... What I think is the coolest thing is this is now a division of Fruit of the Loom and also Vanity Fair. And you can still buy Vasserat pieces today. Looks like they do still create half slips. But I absolutely love these pieces because they are simple but have the most beautiful, beautiful details. I really love the combination of this kind of beigey lace-covered shelf bust but then also having the black lace edge cups right there it's simple it's sexy and it really is timeless because you look at this piece and you could easily see this as being modern from one of your favorite lingerie brands it could even double as a victoria's secret bra but it's not it is from the 60s and it's in almost perfect condition Better believe that if this actually fit me, I would be wearing it all the time. This one is definitely a beauty. I don't know if any camera or photo can show just how beautiful this, it's like a soft peachy ballet pink bra, but this one is absolutely stunning and I've dated it probably late 40s, more than likely early 1950s. I had to use this vintage dress clip to try to keep the takedown but it's by the brand Forever Yours. Now, I tried to look online and find more about this brand and what it was connected to. I did find a couple that were marked Forever Yours by Ellen. There are some pieces online that match this, but I wasn't able to find anything about the specific brand yet. But I know I will especially with ads. I try to save ads where I can. So by the time I edit this video, if I find any information about it, I will pop it in here. But this one is just so stunning. And I wish I would have notated where I got this from because I got it a long time ago. And anytime I get like this peachy, satiny looking material in lingerie, I, I, I love it. Absolutely am obsessed. Even just looking at the remarkable embroidery. See these tiny little hearts? These are details that you can't see unless you really, really look close and pay attention. 
So let's take a moment and appreciate all the details. say this about all of them this one has to be one of my favorites because anything with metallic thread like this beautiful trim on I would call this more of a shelf bust especially when you wear it but I am just obsessed with this one especially the label this of course is a 1970s Fredericks of Hollywood and I love brands that are still around today still a cool brand but these pieces are definitely where it's at I'll insert some pictures of the Fredericks of Hollywood catalogs that we have in our archive but I love how a lot of these pieces are documented that's how a lot of women chose these they looked in the catalogs saw the really beautiful hand-drawn pictures that are now just art like pop art and wanted to have lingerie just like what they saw in the catalogs and magazines. I also thought it was really interesting that on the material tag it looks like someone hand wrote the percentages and I don't know if that was a sales clerk or what but again this bra looks like it was never worn and I believe I don't know if it was dead stock it didn't come with the original tags but I would assume that had this been worn even you know perspiration water washing anything like that this would have been pretty degraded but i just find that so fascinating now fredericks of hollywood began in 1946 and it said it started in a fifth avenue lot in new york city but by 1947 they had moved their operations to the west coast and of course their hollywood location <laughs> became synonymous with fredericks of hollywood now they of course provided a very big array of lingerie, bridal lingerie, special occasion lingerie, tons of pieces, panties, their famous feather mules or little bedroom boudoir heels. But they also created pieces that became iconic in pop culture. Mae West famously wore a white peignoir set in her 1952 Life magazine cover, Jaja Gabor, Madonna, Ava Gardner, all wore Fredericks of Hollywood pieces. Now I found this story interesting and I'm not sure if it's true, but it said in 1992 Fredericks Lingerie Museum drew a lot of attention when it was looted during the Los Angeles riots. Now Madonna's black bustier, which was worn for her music video or in her music video, Open Your Heart, was stolen and has up till now never been returned. Fredericks put up a thousand dollar reward and apparently Madonna gave the museum a replacement in exchange for a ten thousand dollar donation to an organization that supplied free mammograms to people experiencing poverty. So that's pretty cool. I hope that's true. Fredericks of Hollywood was a market leader in lingerie until the 1980s when it was of course overtaken by lingerie giant Victoria's Secret. I used to work at Victoria's Secret. I did freight and while I have some cool pieces from them, I really don't think anything can beat Fredericks of Hollywood. something a little special. So you may have heard of the bra brand Form Fit, and this piece is part of their designer collection. 
as you can tell, this piece just looks different than the others. And if we take a look at the tag, you'll quickly read why. This is part of Form Fit's designer collection. Now, Form Fit was established in 1917, and in I believe it was in the 1960s, Emilio Pucci ended up joining the design team and eventually came out with his own Pucci prints, but it created the designer collection, and these were a little bit more upscale luxe pieces. It's a little bit hard to read on this tag, but here it says that all of this is hand-clipped French lace, which I'm sure at that time was really, really something to behold with your lingerie. Now, it can be really hard to find agreed upon history for a lot of these lingerie brands. I know I found several different years and timelines for Form Fit. I know that it merged in the 50s with Form Fit Rogers, and Rogers had its own lingerie line. I have some beautiful lingerie pieces from that as well. But to date these pieces gets a little bit tricky. Now, when I originally got this, I thought it was from the mid to late 60s, but obviously looking closer at the tag, it's more probably the early 70s. And the reason why I say that, the tag, the font, just matching it up with similar tags to that era, but also the style of this bra can give a little bit of, of clues as to why. In the 1970s, you saw the resurgence of Victorian inspiration in a lot of pieces. And this bra, although the cut and shape is not exactly what you would expect in the Victorian era, it does kind of draw, I believe, inspiration more from the 1920s and the lace bandeau style bras. So this one's a little bit harder. I know Form Fit Rogers in the mid to late 70s had a bolder font and red tag. So again, I, I think this is from the early 70s. If anybody out there knows for sure, please leave a comment below. Again, I try to find the best information I can by looking at different museums, but sometimes they don't take pictures of the tags, so you kind of have to make a little bit more of an educated guess. garter belt I think would go perfect with that previous bra but this piece again the tag was a lot harder to find information about than I thought so I'll, I'll just do my best this one comes from the brand Simone and I've only been able to find a couple of pieces with this branding on it I've had other garters from this brand. None have been black or with these beautiful little rosettes, but I've had ivory ones, white ones. And again, it's really hard to find information just on this specific brand. I was looking at some different lingerie collections online, and I did find this brand dating back to, I believe, 1927. Again, I couldn't find much information about it. I tried looking through different business records. Again, it's all a work in progress. I am not a lingerie historian, but I try to learn as I go. But all I know is this is such a stunning piece, and oh, I just love to stare at it. Now, 
since we talked about Victoria's Secret overtaking a lot of the brands that I just talked about, I thought it'd only be appropriate to show my favorite style pieces that I got from my time working at Victoria's Secret. Now, when I was working freight, we often had access when they had the semi-annual sale. I was in back unloading all the boxes and we all would get first dibs on the sale pieces coming out. And shockingly, this was one of them. In prior archive videos, I've shown the matching bra for this piece, but around the time I was working and doing Freight of Victoria's Secret, I also was getting my shop, Carmine and Hayworth, off the ground. I would work doing freight from about 5.30 in the morning until 2 p.m. at night. And I remember seeing these in the regular price section for months. And these were not cheap. I think the bras were about $98. The panties, I think, were 30 to 40 some. I can't remember. And the moment I saw these come through for the semi-annual sale, I kind of went a little overboard. I grabbed every single panty I could, and these come in silver as well. All the bras that were left, everything, and I bought them all. <laughs> but I love anything with rhinestones, the glittery material to it. Now, while Victoria's Secret has its issues, I still just appreciate this particular style. And they're not meant for comfort, they're meant for looks. and. I'm just completely obsessed. Here is the glorious silver version, and I thought it'd be cool to have Carol Lombard and Marion Davies behind these ones. But how stunning are these? Now I've used these in photo shoots, and if I remember, I'll try to insert some photos here but I, again, ate up everything I could. I have a lot of these still at the shop, all of the panties, all of the bras. And just for those of you who are curious, if you want some of these for yourself, these are part of the Dream Angels collection. I did, when I first started and got my new brick and mortar shop in 2020, there were some that I ended up selling. They still have their original tags on it but I kept a great majority of them. Thank so I thank you for watching another vintage lingerie video. And now I am just gonna pop in some photos of how I use all of my vintage lingerie and how I styled them. Now, please keep in mind, these photos were taken a few years ago. <laughs> I definitely got into it. I loved playing dress up in these, coming up with outfits. I had a lot more time to stage these, now not so much, so bear with me. It's definitely a little bit dated, but I was really excited about some of the outfits I came up with and being able to bring a lot of these vintage lingerie pieces to life. Maybe if I get more days off coming up, I can take more updated photos, but until then, these are just going to have to do. But thanks again for watching. And we'll see you next time.